Alrighty guys, we are live and we're looking at the new Traxxas TRX4, their Land Rover Defender. Uh, lots of cool stuff that they're doing with this rig and so I thought I'd go ahead and uh, show it to you guys live as we are uh, taking a look over it. I just unboxed it and did a video and so now we're just going to go ahead and uh, show you guys what's going on. What's up Man Attack? I swear you are like always the first one in. Pretty, pretty cool how that happens. So I've got the box right here. And uh, you can see the power of portals. That's the uh, the new gimmicky cool thing in this rig is the uh, portal axles. And so that's one of the things that they're hyping up on this thing. So RC Epicness, this runs a little over 450, I think. 460 something. So hey, Aaron, how's it going? So I chose the gray one, as you can see. Um, but I also think that I need to get my charger going because my my phone looks like it's not, not holding up so well as far as battery power here, guys. Sorry about that. Hey, what's going on, Ray? Matt? Yeah, mine I was over 400, I can say that. So... Give me a second here, I gotta plug in. These guys are gonna wave around as I get this set up. The roof rack does need some scale accessories, you are right. I've got a bunch of them to put in it. So, I've got a bunch from Derelict RC that he gave me that we're going in some other stuff, but this one needs a little bit more coverage since there's gonna be the, uh, the body clips going up in the top there, so. So yeah, we, uh, we're looking at it came out just came in today went and picked it up and uh, so far it looks really really good to me um, as I've gone through it it feels nice and solid uh, well built and uh, the red cat one also has my interest so I'll say that um, lots of cool RC stuff coming out hopefully they'll just keep bringing out more scale stuff so Really wish that my phone charger cable was a little bit longer and kind of tethered here. So you can see they've got, you know, little tow hooks on the front. They've got a, like a fake winch on the front of it. It's got nice plastic headlights here, but it looks like it's going to be tricky to actually get lights in there because of the fenders. Just showing you guys what, what we'll be dealing with here. The fenders go up in here right to where that... Uh, hits so uh it'll take a little bit of work but you can get a light in there as they're already like i said nice plastic setup they've got it actually if you look in here closely if the light hits it, you can see they kind of have like faux fans in here just in the way that they took the uh, plastic and they uh they pressed it so you've got like a fake fan look in there um I'm not going to recommend it over the SCX-10 2 yet because uh, that truck's so awesome and I haven't driven this one yet. Uh, these are kind of rubber flares, which is nice. They're going to take a little bit more abuse without cracking. And so um, the scale detail on that's nice with all these little screws going in to hold these in place. Tires. You know, they look like there's tracks as branded. They're not scale of some kind of BF Goodrich or anything like that. But you've got a snorkel, and it's also kind of a rubberized piece as well as the mirrors. So hopefully those will take a licking and just keep on uh, holding on there without breaking. A lot of these kind of things break off. It's got the nice rack on the top. You're saying up here this definitely needs some scale accessories. Already tagged it with a Grace with RC stickers. Those just came in. So, uh, yeah, it's looking, looking cool under the hood. We've got where all the magic happens because there's four servos in here. So you've got three little ones, and then you've got the big one that's uh, chassis mounted here in the front. And so that's kind of, that's, I mean, this thing's in here rock solid, not moving anywhere. So you're not going to get any flex in that actual mount on this. You've already got metal links in here, steel links, uh, as well as four link steel on the bottom. So that's nice. They've got really beefy uh, rod ends too, which is, is really nice. 
It's just got uh, plastic drive shafts, which is okay. See the skid plate here. Um, the motor or the the battery, I don't know. Maybe could go up here somehow over the motor. You could probably work in something off of these posts right here. To if you want to get a little bit more forward weight, but it would be higher or about the same area, I guess. So, but it's uh, definitely the way that they've got this. So you've got the air locking front and rear diffs, basically. Um, and so you're using the, uh, uh, these servos here lock the front and the rear differentials. And then this, uh, servo here does your high and low gear and it's got the XL5, which is a great little, uh, ESC. And then your waterproof box, like the bomb proof box that Traxxas does. These things are awesome. It does not come with a battery or a charger. Uh, this is my Venom battery in here. Uh, the battery strap is actually kind of neat in the way that it twists and flips to give it a little bit more height uh, running it that way. If we look at the controller, I'll turn it on here. And... All right, so um, basically on the controller, here's how you change your diffs is a switch on the top. So back is open diff, centered is going to be your front diff lock and then all the way forward is going to be front and rear uh, diffs are locked. Um, I don't know what companies, I don't know that the Traxxas is going to pair up with them for upgrades. It's whether or not people think they can make money if they make upgrade parts for these. And um, so we'll see uh, how many of these sell and that's probably going to be part of the uh, the game. Traxxas will probably start talking to some companies, I'm sure, and trying to get the parts out because people wait to buy until they know there's parts. And so you get that kind of, uh, <laughs> you, you somebody's got to influence the market a little bit. So how's it going, Atlantic Marco? I was just showing um, high-low here. We'll see this, uh, this diff lack, or this servo will switch. And uh, the high speed's definitely a lot quicker than the uh, the low gear, and so um, you can go really, really slow in low gear. But if you look at these axles, this is where it's it's interesting, and this is where they uh, they're kind of trick in what they've done. You can see where the center of the tire is is lower than the center of the axle, and that's because they've run basically. Uh, you know, the axle running through here is actually going to a gear um, that's driving another gear to uh, to power your wheels. So you're actually setting your um, your hub and all that lower than where the axle sits. So it's not centered. So it's, it's kind of an interesting setup, and we'll see how that handles heavy abuse and pounding and all that on the rocks and whether or not people like this or if they're gonna switch out these axles for something they can get that's gonna be metal uh, casing and all that. And so that'll be interesting too to see who comes up with these same type of axles and who uh, who Traxxas will let do it if it's uh, something that they've gone ahead and got some kind of uh, copyrights on or uh, patents on the design so we'll see uh, what kind of advancements we see there and also uh, I guess we'll see what the competitions and all that are going to say about this extra ground clearance and the way that they're running these axles in order to get it if it looks scale enough or not that's a good question RC Hobby Steve um, it's a pretty small area uh, in there that you're working in. You might have to actually change out several things in order to switch up your gears in there. But I don't know. I haven't opened it up yet to look. That'll be one of the things that I'm interested to see. And so not only do you have a lot of clearance here, but I mean this thing actually, it rides really high. And so it... uh it's got a lot of upper weight there too so it's gonna 
going to wait and see how it feels on the trail, if it feels top heavy or not, because your battery's high and your ride height is already so high, which is adjustable. Um, you can always adjust things like the shocks and that to let it sit a little bit lower. Thanks, Steve. Just came in today. I, I emailed them saying, hey, is that come in yet? He said, it just came off the truck. So... It's uh, definitely looking good. The body now on the inside, you can see they've got the wheel wells that are molded, and they've also got these like stiffeners in here between it, so it keeps your body nice and rigid, uh, as well as your tire. And you, this looks like you're gonna have a lot easier time putting the uh, the lights in the backside, the shocks. Um, they actually look metal. I did not look at that earlier. They, they seem like they're metal shock towers with plastic caps. Yeah, alu aluminum GTS shocks, it says. It says, and the, the verbiage too is kind of interesting. So you've got steel gears definitely in your um your servo you've got um here in your axle the gear reduction in the portals here is is, is also uh running metal gears uh this some look metal to me some don't but down at the bottom it talks about the uh uh where was that here tracks is tough says that the uh, while brushless ready steel portal axle and transfer case gears are smooth and quiet so that the steel here to me would say steel port axle and transfer case gears so I, I'm guessing that those are steel gears in there um, but just some of them because of the different colorations some of them look like they might have been plastic but maybe not maybe they're just different color steel gears in there I mean, they've got different color metal gears in there, I guess. So here you can see the locking diff that they've got where this clips in and, and locks it up when you uh, remotely lock up the diffs with the controller, which is a really, really slick feature. So you can't just do the rear diff by itself. Um, and so it's, it's only uh, front by itself, or you can lock both diffs. So let's see if we can get a, a shot in here. Not really gonna see it, anything move. Maybe, maybe you'll see the wire move. Yeah, a little bit. So it says the, uh, the diff is uh, moving there. So I don't know, is there anything that you guys wanna try and see that I'm not showing? You want to see a side by side? I've actually got, yes, I've got my SCX10 in here. Give me one second here. Let's see what we can pull up. We'll put this back on top so you can kind of get this sizing. Getting the body on is a little difficult to line it all up because of the plastic. Uh, pieces in there and so I found that usually once I get the back on it's easier to get the front but you're also lining it up with ridges here and then on the back bumper as well and so come on. yeah now I'm one handing it I can't get it on there it goes so now that is on I'll get it set there, and let me walk around my messy office here. Oh, actually, here's the SCX-10. So the only thing that really is different is the wheelbase is a little bit longer on the Traxxas, um, and the height is a little bit, it's a little bit taller. It feels a lot larger, and it's heavier for sure. Um, but you can see here these heights are the same down below is where you see the difference here 
in the axles for sure in the uh, the ground clearance wish I had my tape measure with me to show you guys but it's definitely lower on the uh, SCX 10 uh, you can also see that just a little bit half an inch maybe quarter of an inch difference in the wheelbase length or the wheel yeah the, the wheelbase the length of it so um, height you know you're just dealing with the body um, or the uh, the cage makes it taller on this one so I don't know there how does that look Uh, layout wise on the interior it's, it's laid out quite a bit different in the way that where they put the motor and this has got a lot more going on with all of the uh, the servos that they've got but the weight is definitely much much heavier and much more noticeable in the uh, the Traxxas so we'll see how that that does hopefully it's low weight and so it'll keep it planted yeah it does the paint on this is really nice. This one actually looks like it's an aged, like it's 2017 right now and you're driving an old Jeep around like it's kind of faded. Um, but the blacked out windows and all the, the, the flare on this really definitely helps. These are, you know, nicer uh, fender flares than you've got over on this, which are plastic. So bumper and everything just just little details on it the uh, door handles look better on this one than on this one but the uh, the gas cap just looks outrageous it doesn't look with scale at all so that's kind of a, a funny thing to see on it but I mean it actually it's so stiff when you get this locked in so everything is just the whole body is just stuck where this one definitely has a lot more movement on it still and it you know feels flimsy and sloppy and this one just does not because it's locked it's also a little bit thicker feeling lexan as well but this truck is unstoppable on the trail so that's what we'll have to wait and see how this compares it actually has a um on the back, I haven't really showed, I don't think too much. You got the spare tire here. You got the gas cans, the jack, and then you've got a spot here for a uh, trailer hitch. So that's kind of cool. Fake Great Britain uh, plate on there. Third light, brake light. The stickers on the windows are not super awesome, but they work and uh, they help keep costs down probably because they do have a lot of other plastic components on here that they are giving you so it's showing basically how the, the links would be too here if you didn't have the portal axles because of where they would connect on and so not only do, would you have um, but the, the pumpkin riding lower, but your links are actually would be lower too. So definitely a pretty cool uh, little concept they've got there. I mean, you've got lots and lots of ground clearance on that truck. So yeah, I mean, it kind of feels like it would be a little bit top heavy to me. Uh, someone's saying that they've heard that it's top heavy. And I could, I could definitely feel it. It's also, I mean, the suspension is just so fluid and smooth that, you know, if you do have that weight and you're on a hill, it feels like it would probably want to just sink into it. So we'll see. Where this one doesn't, it's not as smooth, but it's also much more rigid than this. I mean, this feels beautiful, but... It may not it may not handle well as smooth as it feels. Do 
So those are the two. Anyone else have any questions or want to see any parts of it that I haven't shown maybe close enough for you? Show back on the inside here. We've got your motor, transmission. We're on actually. I've seen the Everest Gen 7. It looks really cool. Really, really cool. You can see they've got the extra little bar in here from the chassis down to the axle on the front. You could add beadlock wheels to it. Um, it didn't come with them. These tires will probably... This didn't come with beadlocks either, but... Um, a lot of times they don't come with them as the stock tire and are ready to run. So I have bead locks that I can put on and I've got some other tires as well that are sitting down in my garage. I just need to take the time to put all those stupid tiny little screws in. That's what gets me about the bead locks is uh, how much work they are to put together. I'm hoping that there'll be some new pumpkin covers and stuff that you'll be able to get for this. Um, you know, it'll be interesting to see if we get any of these components, like here, in metal options, because this seems like it might be a break point. Um, I don't have batteries in both, I don't think. But you get pretty good articulation in this. That's where it's just starting. So it's probably about five inches. Um, this one does about the same. Let me see if I can't. This one's got quite a bit of articulation here in this SCX-10. So, it's pretty close though, I'd say. Let me try and do like a test here. So, top knuckle. They both got about the same. They might have, a, you know, both of them might even have a little bit more in them than what I just showed you, but that's a good four inches up off the ground so pr pretty decent uh, articulation I'd say for sure stock and this one actually is doing it without a battery in it but the battery on this one sits forward as well which I liked about it is that they, they ride the battery up here in the front get that extra weight up front where this is just kind of center and high so, yeah, it'll be, it definitely be interesting to get it on the trail. So, uh, what's my opinion about why Traxxas came into the crawler game? That's from Noe's Fast RC. Um, I think because they see that there's money there. There's a lot of people into the crawler market. Um, there's not a ton of competition, I don't think, in the market as well. Uh, so I think that they saw, you know, potential to make some money and, uh, you know, make, make more vehicles. So, you know, they're probably also just trying to diversify the ones that they have. They've got boats, they've got dragsters, they've got pretty much something in every uh, other category of RC. They've got drones. And so I think that, you know, it kind of rounds it out for them. And I'm glad that they are in it. They typically make decent vehicles that have lots of part support um so uh we'll see drifter is next yeah i mean you could probably drift some of their other cars all right they've got the street cars like that ford gt that came out you could put drift tires on that and that could be a sweet little drifter I was actually looking at that. That's a pretty sweet looking car. So, 
Yeah, I mean, I, I've got my X-Max and I've got my Stampede from Traxxas. I think that's all I've got from Traxxas, though. But both of those have been awesome and very easy to get parts for. Very easy to, to maintain. And I haven't even needed that many parts for them anyway. How quick is the servo? Um, I, of course, I just put the, the top back on. Uh, it doesn't say. It says 75X something waterproof. So it's waterproof servo. Can we see down here? 2075X. Maybe somebody can pull up the, uh, the specs on that. It doesn't say on here. Uh, what kind of speed or torque power um, you've got for that. But, I mean, it felt... Let's see here. It felt pretty good. So, it seems pretty responsive to me. Pretty strong, too. Let's see if we can... Here, kind of put resistance on there. I mean, it seems pretty strong. Yeah, it's a 45 degree turn radius, so you're gonna have pretty good steering, that's for sure. Get some nice tight turns. I don't remember what the SCX-102 is. It actually feels like a sharper turn radius than this. But it's almost insane as on that one. Turn radius is crucial when you're getting up over a and trying to get between trees and obstacles and on rocks getting a hard enough cut. How does it do? I don't know. I just unboxed it, so I'll get it on the dirt hopefully tomorrow or this weekend and find out. We're just looking at the uh, components in it. It just came out today, or mine was just arrived today from pre-order, so I've not had time to get it out to the trails or any dirt. It's completely black outside, so throwing it in the dirt will not give us any visual of how she does. Where can you adjust the wheelbase? Uh, I mean, that'd probably just be doesn't look super adjustable actually. Here's the best I can do for showing the difference in the speeds for high and low gear. That's low gear. That's high gear. Low gear. high gear so it's quite a bit faster it seems like it's gonna be faster than the axial especially the SCX 10 2 because this is a 21 turn motor so it's, it's just a straight up faster motor um, I think they came with a 35 this time, the SCX 10 twos. Before that actually was running 27 turn in their RTRs. So like my white Jeep uh, Wrangler. Yeah, these are running a, a 35 turn motor. So these uh, the comments are disappearing pretty quickly, guys. I don't know how to get them back up here. Or if when I miss them, I miss them. Oh, there we go. 
Uh, where can you adjust the wheelbase nicely? How's it compared to the SCX10? Uh, the flat, uh, I mean, the chassis is steel, so it's pretty stiff. I have not seen the 21 turn before for them, so it actually says 21 turn reverse rotation, so I don't even know what that means uh, as far as what they're doing there uh, and why they're doing reverse rotation and, and what that means for the gears if the gears are reversed or what Traxxas is doing there. So. It does have wheel wells. I was showing those just a second ago. Uh, but it's all waterproof anyway, so you shouldn't have issues there. But it will keep it cleaner. Because it'll keep a lot of that water. Unless you're just sinking in water. But if you're just running through puddles and stuff, it'll definitely keep it dry. Because it meets up pretty well here and, and around these. So it, it does kind of button it up pretty well. But you've got a lot of cables and stuff, and that'll be interesting to see, you know, if any of these ever snag from branches and pull out, you know, these diff uh, cables here that are the, for the locks. And so that'll be interesting if, if you get branches or stuff up in there and any chance of pulling them out, so we'll see how that kind of stuff does as we take it. I don't go anywhere where it's like super clean and clear. So it'll be in, it'll be in muck, it'll be in water, it'll be having sticks stuck up in the, the links here. But actually the links, it's crazy because they almost run, I mean, they're almost straight here. You have no, no significant angle to them. So it's just very flat. This takes 3S, uh, and that's going to be based on the ESC here, and that's what it can handle. Uh, the motor could take more, potentially, depending on your gearing and all that, but it's going to be your ESC, whether or not it'll be able to handle it. And this one uh, says 3S that it can handle. And so that's actually what I've got in there right now. And that's actually what I run in my uh, SCX-10 too as well. Mainly because it's a 35 turn motor and I need the extra speed just from the battery. Um, because eventually I'll probably change out that motor to a 27 turn. Hopefully a dual motor setup like I have in my other one. So I get that nice low end but also can have like decent speed, wheel speed if I need to get up something. And have uh, my wheels spinning a little bit faster. But um, this has the stable, um, their stabilizer that they've got in it. TSM, I think they call it, tracks of stability management. So um, that's programmable. Here you can see actually what they're saying about the capabilities with the bumper and everything. Uh, 57 degree angle from your tire to it. So your approach angle is very, very good on this. Here's where it talks about the steel frame. Somebody was just asking about that. It's got the ladder frame steel. The inner fenders. You can see how well they, they button up in there when the wheel's off. Close it all up. So, it seems like a really, really, really capable truck. One that I'm I'm excited about. I've been excited about and waiting for. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm definitely gonna take it out and compare it with my Jeep and see how I feel like they're handling. But um, I like the diffs that they've got in here, the locking diffs. I think that's super slick. I never usually go through and lock them on my other crawlers uh, because I do use wheel speed and I want some more of that control. Um, at speed and um, so the ability to just 
like I wouldn't if I had a real Jeep or Land Rover be able to just lock them when I need to lock them and then unlock them is pretty slick so um, there's only been a few cars that I've seen that have done that in the past and uh, they didn't do it super well so or so I've read uh, as I've looked into this so I'm excited at that about the potential I hopefully it's a good thing and it's not um, going to be more problems than it is uh, useful you know, there's certain things like your winches and all that where you buy them and it's for fun and um, then you go to use it for something that's not working or, uh, but, you know, the more the more moving parts that you add, the more chance you have for failure when, uh, when it comes t uh, time to need it, <laughs> I guess it would be what I'm trying to say. But yeah, it's... Uh, it's the vehicle I've wanted for a long time. I love the look of the uh, the Land Rover Defender. Like I said, I tried building out my own uh, one there with the uh, RC four-wheel drive. And so this one, I mean, if I can get the part support and all that, you know, I've, I've been reluctant to buy the, the full-size one from RC four-wheel drive just because of people I know that have them. I've had a lot of problems with axles uh, and then getting spare parts because they're sold out a lot of times. And so um, I was hesitant to get one because of that. And the, uh, the SCX-10s just did it. Slap that G-Made up against it. All right, let me do that. Let's move some of this stuff out of the way. You guys can see here how, how messy things have gotten since I've been traveling so much. Just got all the parts and the stuff from everything just kind of scattered. Do an unboxing or do a video and then chuck it all down there. The other mess. Just stuff everywhere right now. I like it a lot cleaner than this. But I was working on the, the Monster Jam SMT-10 up here like a madman when I got back from Colorado right off the airplane I came home and worked on it till 2 in the morning and then uh, yeah then the next day I worked on it till 1.30 in the morning and then the next night we drove to North Carolina for the event so alright so Steve is asking to see these side by side dropping everything and so this is the RC four-wheel drive version. It's got actual plastic windows. Um, it's got a metal cage on it here. I tried to hide away instead of having body posts, which hasn't worked out so well for me. Um, ground clearance is a huge win to the Traxxas. I'll say that much. Let's see here. Look at that difference. <laughs> that is insane. Bigger tires too a little bit so that helps. But this is a really short wheelbase too on this truck. And in fact, I had to shorten it. But from the sides, underneath even, we back to back these. And come across here. Look at the chassis sitting. And my cable management's not great. I was, I was scabbing some parts off this. And cut the zip tie but I mean this is sitting really low this one you see no no chassis under it that is insane so ride heights about the same a um, little bit higher in this one but that's because of my make on it uh, it should sit a little bit lower in the end but it's close um, I like the smaller two doors of these in real life as well, but uh, 
that wasn't an option here. I'm totally fine with it being four door. But I finally have the capable one that I've wanted out of these kind of this kind of a look of a scale vehicle. So I am totally stoked. So those are the two. I mean, the gas cap on this one's way better <laughs> than this. This is gonna be the one thing that's gonna get me. I'm just gonna take it off. That's why, why wait, I'm taking it off now. Because it's just so weird. It's kind of like a modern art style kind of thing. I don't know why, why they did that. It looks like cartoon art. So I'm gonna take that off. Other than that though, the decals or the decals look pretty good. So anyway, see you I'm gonna I'm gonna take off as well, guys. I've got an actual video of this that I'm gonna edit together. Um, but after I did the video, I was looking at it and thought, you know, I'll let people look at it and see if they want to see anything up close that I might not have gotten uh, in the video. But overall, looks like they uh, for a first time did a great job with this so you guys will be seeing me more i'll be around for a little bit uh here got to get some videos cranked out and uh also get some videos of this cranked out at the same time so peace guys